Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Surprise, Knife Junkies. It's Jim the Knife Newbie Person along with Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco, and we are here midweek on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Bob, what's going on here, man? We're, we're, we're throwing things uh, up in the air, throwing things for a loop. You know, what are well, we doing Jim. here? I, I think it's our own desire to hear our own voices, really. Uh, uh, your desire, not mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we have these great interviews that, that uh, we release, and uh, in an effort to not uh, cut them short due to other uh, other things we want to do on the show, we decided to break out some of the segments we like to do. You know, We talk about knife news or, mm-hmm. uh, you know, for a while there, I was doing a little historical pieces on knives or, or uh, maintenance tips and that kind of thing. And those kind of drifted away once we started doing these nice long interviews. And you know, I'm still interested in doing that. You're still interested in doing that. So we Absolutely. decided we'd break out and do a little 20 to 30 minute show every week to just get that stuff out of the way and then have the interview show just be about the interview. Well, not get that stuff out of the way. I don't want you to just toss it off like that. I mean, some, you know, some pretty important stuff we're going to be talking about. So uh, it's I not just going to be you and us rambling on. Yeah, I know. I'm being, <laughs> we're being humble now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is important stuff. Yeah. Well, and, uh, you know, that's, that's the purpose of this additional podcast, if you will. It's still the Knife Junkie podcast. It's just another episode. Uh, you'll find it in your podcast feed or podcast app player, whatever you like to uh, listen to. Without having to do anything, it'll just show up Wednesday nights, Thursday mornings, kind of depending on uh, your your feed. But you can also find it just by going to thenifejunkie.com. You'll find all the podcasts there, as well as the videos, newsletter subscriptions, other kind of stuff on the thenifejunkie.com website. So you can listen there. So, Bob, I know the uh, segments, one of the ones I really love that we used to do was the first tool mm-hmm. where you kind of talked about some of that historical aspects and uh, I remember one, the the buoy or the buoy. Yeah. <laughs> I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, yeah. And that tied into the K-Bar. You know, we, we just mm-hmm. talk about these historical strains. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the Navaja, uh, but I guess we'll do that after we talk about some of the knife news, huh? Yeah, we're going to have uh, one of our segments that we used that we used to do or still do, all to do, but now we're going to do some, uh, some more of it, knife life news, if you will, where we uh, talk about what's happening in the knife world. Yeah. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast, and now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So, Jim, CRKT uh, is coming out with another one of their high-end limited uh, limited offers. You know, they came out with the Shock recently, spelled mm-hmm. X-O-C by Flavio Ocoma, and it was featuring the new Deadbolt lock. And it's this giant, super, super heavy-duty uh, built titanium knife, and uh, uh, it was coming out for... 750 bucks, which is uh, a, a new price range for CRKT. And uh, they're coming out with a new one called the Panache. Um, and that's by Ken Onion. And we know Ken Onion. Uh, we all know Ken Onion. He's designed uh, very, you know, a bunch of iconic knives for a bunch of different makers, uh, uh, chief among them CRKT and Kershaw. But this uh, new CRKT Panache doesn't look like a Ken Onion. We know Ken Onion for his organic curvy lines, his recurved blades, his handles that look ergonomic. You know, you, they feel comfortable just looking at them. Uh, but he's kind of stepping out of his uh, comfort zone here. Maybe I shouldn't say that. He's probably incredibly comfortable looking right. at this knife. It's right. actually beautiful. But he's uh, designed this panache in a, in a different sort of uh, design language. It's uh, much more angular and... Uh, sort of business looking you know it's very uh kind of aggressive looking uh but also uh, those those uh curvy lines have turned into angles and mm. uh and and straight lines for the panache uh, now this is going to be a frame lock with uh carbon fiber inserts and uh 20 cv i'm mean, not 20 cv i'm sorry ctx xhp steel i always have a hard time saying that well, who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's going to be about six ounces. It's got a fold-over clip. It's a, it, it is a luxury knife, but it's mm. also a hard-use knife. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and like I said, just unique for Ken Onion. Now, they're only making 550 of these things, and they're co- it's coming out for a much more reasonable 295 bucks. And I say much more reasonable because 750 bucks for the shock seemed almost to alien- <laughs> an mm. alienating price. You know, it's right. like... 
It's like you go from $40 knives to a $750 knife in one fell swoop. It kind of seemed like a, a little extreme. But this uh, limited edition to, you know, limited to 550 um, panache for for 295 for Ken Onion seems more reasonable, especially with the materials they're using. You already got your name on the list? Uh, no, but uh, <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind. It is a beautiful knife. Right. I'm always a little bit behind the eight ball, you know, with news. So I'm sure there are guys out there who, who've been on the list for years. You know, you, you do have a, a new knife coming in that will uh, spill the beans on a little bit later. So, uh, yeah. 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 Yes, I do. <laughs> Let's uh, continue the uh, the budget knife news, if you will. Some uh, stuff with Artisan going on you wanted to mention? Yeah. Okay. So Artisan Cutlery. Jim, you remember them uh, from the uh, review I did about their kinetic tool. It's mm, the, that's right. uh, yeah. the butterfly or the the bally song slash switchblade, and instead of a live sharp blade, it's got a, a multi tool. You know, with a with a prior and a cap lifter and little uh, little socket cutouts. Well, artisan. Okay, so that that was my first artisan knife, and the quality of that knife really sold me on the brand. And to me, it immediately raised them up to the level of the Kaiser and the Wee uh, knives from from uh, China. Well, Artisan has decided to follow suit with Kaiser and Wee and come out with a uh, their own sort of budget line with D2 steel blades and G10, much like Kaiser came out with Tangram, and uh, you know they have uh, the the uh, budget Kaisers through Tangram, mm-hmm. and Wee came out with Civivi, and uh, lots of D2, lots of G10, but really the the focus is the design and the fit and finish and the, and the action, and so. Artisan Cutlery came out with their CJRB brand. It doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, but CJRB is the Artisan Cutlery's new uh, budget line. And just from what I've seen, and I've seen a few reviews online too, they look amazing. One of them, uh, one of them, I, I really, uh, I really dig. Called the Tala. It's got this menacing and gorgeous sort of Warncliffe blade. And uh, I think I'm going to have to pick one of those up just to see. Just, just you know, have to, yeah, yeah, got for, to do it. <laughs> in, in the name of science or well, well whatever. And, uh, you know, do a knife review on the show. Who knows? There's a right. multi- multitude of reasons, Mrs. Yeah. Knife Junkie, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> I think justifications is the correct word. <laughs> That's right. That's but I, I'm definitely going to check yeah. these out because if if the kinetic tool is any, any indication of uh, the quality of artisan cutlery, I, I have a feeling these CJRBs are going to be killer. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I think it's exciting. I I like to see knives, uh, knife companies competing with one another on similar grounds. You know, artisan mm. probably figures that uh, not everybody has two hundred bucks to drop on one of their knives, so why not offer the same quality, the same you know beautiful designs, um, a, you know, across the spectrum, so everyone can enjoy them. I think it's a smart move. A little bit of lighter news we wanted to mention uh, that time of year again, uh, Halloween coming up. When you think Halloween, not only trick-or-treating, candy, costumes, but uh, you think pumpkins. And when you think pumpkins, you either think first pumpkin pie, which is where my mind goes to, <laughs> but, but also uh, pumpkin carvings and a lot of pumpkin carving contests. And Emerson Knives is no different. It's the time for their, uh, 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 I don't know if it's annual, but it seems like uh, uh, Emerson Knives pumpkin carving contest. A yeah. couple of rules that you got to fo- uh, follow. The pumpkin's got to be hand carved. I mean, come on, who would try to, you know, cheat that? Laser rule? engrave it. <laughs> right. Uh, the design must be Emerson themed or inspired. The pumpkin must be real. Uh, anyway, they're going to be uh, doing the contest on Instagram. You can get all the details. Uh, if you want to find out about the Emerson Knife Pumpkin Carving Contest, just go to thenifejunkie.com slash pumpkin, and you can uh, find all the details there about how to uh, participate in the uh, pumpkin carving contest. You going to you gonna take part, Bob? Well, uh, uh, maybe, but what, what I was going to suggest is that, you know, I, can, I always, it's always last minute carving the pumpkins at this house, so I don't know if I'm going to have time to carve one for Mr. Emerson. But I'm thinking about what knife you would use to carve these pumpkins. And mm. I'm guessing the carnivore might be the way to go. Cause I think the carnivore, their, their new, uh, steak themed knife, uh, might have a, a thin enough blade to, to easily carve a pumpkin. Um, some of my, uh, some of my Emersons wouldn't be so great at the job. Mm. Uh, for instance, a, a CQC7 would, would probably not be the best knife to carve a pumpkin. But that carnivore, it looks like it could do, uh, quick work to a pumpkin. 
Well, uh, you know, a couple of weeks till Halloween, uh, still time to get your pumpkin carved. So still time for you to suggest to Bob what knife he should use to carve his pumpkin. So call us on the listener line at 724-466-4487. Give Bob a suggestion about what knife he should use to uh, carve his pumpkin, either for the contest or just for the kids at home. And if you do that, then I'm going to have to carve the pumpkin. Hey, there we go. Mic drop right there, man. Get those suggestions <laughs> in. I want to see a video of Bob carving a pumpkin. <laughs> hey, uh, some, uh, yeah, I was going to say serious news, but a little bit more news to kind of wrap, wrap up Knife Life news, Bob. This is an interesting one. The Church of England demands blunt kitchen knives. <sighs> Didn't know that's if you a, were still there. That's that, just a lot to take all in. That's I got to say. Oh, my <laughs> God, people. Really? Every time I think that this has become a nation of pearl clutchers, all you got to do is look over at, at Great Britain, and, and they're always ahead of us in terms of just idiotic laws about knives. Right. I, I I understand they have a lot of knife crime in London. I'm certainly not... Not demeaning I, that. I, I'm not trying like to, that, yeah. to demean that, but okay. All right, so you can't have a knife with a point. So now every criminal is going to have to slash with it, Okay. They're going to have to slash instead of stab. Okay. Or use a hammer. I, I, to me, Jim, this, this just makes me upset. And, and, uh, you know, I guess you got to laugh because if you don't laugh, you'll cry. But right. this is going to tie into, to my, um, Navaja. Yeah. The Navaja talk because coming um, up in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get to that because there are two main lessons you can learn about people through studying, looking at the Navaja. Um, so I'll, I'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. I, I found an interesting uh, quote here, and we're getting this information from KnifeRights.org. Our, our friend Doug Ritter over there, uh, you can find it, uh, this story on KnifeRights.org. Uh, it says the uh, Church of England bishops say that redesigning domestic, domestic kitchen knives to give them rounded ends would combat so-called, quote here, knife crime by making, quote, life-threatening entries far less likely. Also, a side note, the Thames Valley, I don't know if I'm pronouncing Thames. that right, Thames Valley. Okay, well, there you go, <laughs> even though it's spelled T-H-A-M-E-S. <laughs> really? Anyway, they will no longer post photos of seized knives on social media to, quote, help reduce the fear of knives and knife carrying in our local communities. So maybe good or bad, I'm not sure. That's bologna sausage. I'm not going to say what I really think, but that is just <laughs> such crap. There you have it. If you want to read more about that story, you can go to uh, KnifeRights.org or just uh, follow the latest news just by going to the KnifeJunkie.com slash news. We have a, a feed of multiple news sources. We're pulling together right on our web page, the KnifeJunkie.com slash news, and you can keep up with the uh, latest news and information right there on the KnifeJunkie.com website. You know you're a knife junkie if you love your knives more than your spouse. So, Bob. You yes. teased it a moment ago, the Navaja, and it kind of relates to the Church of England story, but you kind of wanted to, to talk about the Navaja a little yes. bit. Yes. So the Navaja, uh, you know it. It's a giant, usually a very large uh, folding knife from Spain. Uh, usually has a clip-pointed blade. Looks something like a big folding bowie, usually. Um, so the, the Navaja is a knife that was born out of weapons restrictions, really. I mean, it was at first just a folding knife. The uh, One of the earliest um, folding knives found was in Spain, and uh, I know they had them perhaps from the Roman era, but in 17th century Spain, the Navaja became popular. Now, first it was a folding knife used for, by craftsmen and workers or even clerics to, to sharpen quills, um, but just a knife that you could fold and put in your pocket. And uh, eventually... There were restrictions laid down on the carrying of swords and other edged weapons to only the nobility. Gee, imagine that. Only the nobility can carry weapons. Sounds familiar, huh? So uh, people started saying, well, I still have to protect my family and I still have use for a knife, uh, knife. So they started focusing more on the Navaja in terms of making it larger and uh, making it uh, more useful for a multitude of tasks, not just not just carpentry and uh, sharpening quills. And then when spring steel was uh, the advent of spring steel in Spain, and they saw that you could temper steel in such a way that it can it can bend and then spring back, they started to build on locking 
uh, springs onto the back of the knife, the knife. So at the, at the base of the blade where the tang is, they engineered in some teeth. And those teeth ratcheted on a, on a plate of spring steel on the back of the knife, giving it kind of a, um, a clicking sound when it opened. Mm-hmm. And once it's fully opened, then it's locked open. And so this was the first folding locking knife that we know mm-hmm. of. Interesting. And, and with that lock, it turns something that was just a tool mm-hmm. into also a weapon because now you can thrust mm-hmm. with it without worry of it folding onto your hands because it locks. So now no one can carry swords. They have this new knife that locks open. So what do they do? They turn it into a big folding sword. And if you look at Cold Steel, they make the Espada series. Mm-hmm. And that is a direct uh, influence from the Navaja. Large mm-hmm. folding sword, uh, large folding knife slash small folding sword that you can stash on your person. Incidentally, those Cold Steels, especially the largest one, look a lot like the traditional Navajas, especially mm-hmm. in the blade. Uh, but people started adopting this locking large locking knife they could hide in their cummerbunds or or you know on their person and uh they were even used by the guerrillas uh who were resisting napoleon's um occupation at mm. 1804 to 1814 and uh then a ring was added and the ring on the back of the lock makes it easier to open and close mm. well especially to close but you can also pull open that uh that ring and swing the blade open if you're if you're apt so knife fighting schools started popping up, but of course they had to be underground because you weren't supposed to be carrying these things right. and you weren't supposed to be using them for fighting. And, you know, naturally, they were also adopted by thugs and brigands and criminals, you know, as, as most good weapons are. And this leads me to my lesson that I can, that I can, uh, the two lessons that you can glean from okay. the evolution of the Navaja, from a simple folding working man's knife to a large, folding, locking weapon. And that is, one, people will always come up with ways to defend themselves and defend their families, whether or not it's legal. True, true. And then the inverse of that, criminals will always find weapons to commit their crimes with, Mm -hmm. whether or not there's a law on the books against it, because they are what? They're criminals. criminals. And they don't care about what? (laughs) The laws. Right. And you can just look at today and, and, uh, you know, you, you see the same fight happening today here in this country and obviously over in Great Britain where they're already disarmed people over there, sadly to say. And, and who's committing all this knife crime in London? Is it, is it law abiding, law abiding citizens who are nope. following the law? No, it's criminals and scumbags who find the knives and get the knives illegally. They don't care about the law. So all you're doing by making these blunted kitchen knives is making it harder to cook for good people. Right. It's uh, it's kind of infuriating. Well, criminals will uh, find a weapon even if it's not a weapon. Yeah. I mean, that, they'll use whatever. So Exactly. Yeah. Box cutters. You can no longer. Now you have to use your keys to open up boxes. I mean, what are they going to do? How, how far are they going to go? They're going to illegalize obsidian? I mean, because that's where we're headed. We're going to all be chipping our own obsidian knives out. Uh, one more thing before I close. This is just a, a, a close on the Navaja. This is just a cool little uh, okay. little bit of uh, trivia. There was also a knife in uh, Andalusia, I believe, called the Salva Virgo. And my wife speaks Spanish, and mm. it means basically save virginity, Salva Virgo. Mm. And it was a small um, Navaja that was used by the Andalusian women stashed in their bodice or in their garter, you know, so in case someone gets fresh with them, they could pull out that little Navaja and do some slicing. Might be leaving less an appendage or two. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, you know, I bet they didn't blunt the tips of those. I bet not. I bet not. All right. Enough of the Navaja. That's kind of one of the things we're trying to, uh, you know, be able to accomplish here on the, the uh, additional Knife Junkie podcast show is, Give Bob a chance to talk about a specific knife, do a knife review. Also, uh, maybe talk about a new knife that he's uh, gotten in the past week. And maybe in the next week or so, we'll have a new knife for you to talk about, maybe. I will. I will. And I'm not going to say who made it, but one of our one of our guests from the show um, mm-hmm. has made me a knife. And he sent me a picture, <laughs> or not a picture, a video uh, through Instagram. And it is fantastically gorgeous and mm. utterly menacing and just mm, 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 cannot wait cannot wait all right well and, and uh, i'm gonna carry it too i'm not gonna you know in speaking with uh alex from alex's knife box this past week 
I was I sh- told him what was coming, and I said, I don't know if I can bring myself to carry it without also carrying a shotgun to protect it. <laughs> and he said, no, man, you got to carry it. Life is short. You're not getting this thing to hang on the wall. Carry right. it. And if you jack it up, you know, most makers are happy to take it back and fix it for you and, right. uh, you know. Get it, get it back on the road, so to speak. So All right. I will be carrying this thing. All right. I'll look forward to that. We'll definitely talk about that on the podcast. You'll see a video of that on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel that you can uh, find at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. If you're not yet subscribed to the Knife Chunky YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Go to thenifejunkie.com slash YT subscribe. That way you'll uh, catch all of Bob's videos when they come out. Be sure to hit that little bell icon so you'll get a notification as well and you don't miss anything there. And uh, Bob talked about Alex from Alex's Knife Box. That was episode 50. So if you hadn't heard that one yet, uh, go. Uh, that was uh, this past Sunday. Go back and listen to the knifejunkie.com slash 50. Talk about your new knives. You know, the knife newbie. I'm trying, man. I'm bidding on some, um, you know, some online knives. We'll see what happens. So if I get one or more of those, we'll talk about that. But speaking of knives, buying, selling, we've added a new page to the website, the knifejunkie.com slash knives. As the knife junkie uh, decides to sell off some of his knives, mm-hmm. or because of our uh, partnership arrangement with uh, several knife companies and affiliate relationships, we have uh, certain knives featured on that page there, limited supply, different kind of things like that. So you can find uh, kind of knives to buy if you're interested on the knifejunkie.com slash knives webpage. Now, I just wanted to mention that Jim just uh, received, well, will be receiving his very first. I don't know, kind of insider knife item. Now, it's not a knife. It's a pen. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of our guests, Daryl Ralph of DDR Knives, was on the show. He was a great guy. We had a a very, very interesting and engaging conversation, and I love his knives. Anyway, as a thank you, he didn't have to do this, but I'm so glad he did. He sent Jim and I uh, pens. He makes pens also. That's right. And he sent us these beautiful copper pens that have been... um, gorgeously and artistically patinaed and uh and they're solid beautiful clickers and uh and they have this little um uh, hoplite helmet kind of uh inscribed in it and i just man i i'm, I'm touched by yes uh, o- over and over you know the the knife community just proves to be generous and genuine and cool as hell and and mr ralph has no no exception he sent us these knives and like yeah. I said, he didn't have to, but I'm glad he did. It was such yeah. a pleasure having him on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Look gorgeous. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Daryl. And if you didn't hear that interview, by the way, you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash 49, knifejunkie.com slash 49. That's the uh, interview Bob had with custom knife maker Daryl Ralph of DDR Knives. Uh, definitely. Thank go you, to thank the you. DDR website and check out all of the beautiful knives, but also check out the beautiful and the pens. pens. Yeah, and he's got, pens. and he's, and as he mentioned on the interview, he's about to start production on a bolt bolt knife pen and if you don't know what that is it it opens up kind of in the same way the bolt of a of a hunting rifle opens up you know like a bolt action rifle so that should be cool too well i did want to uh, mention that uh, the new knives 2020 book is out now the uh, 40th edition i believe of knives uh, book uh, knives 2020. You can find that at the knifejunkie.com slash knives 2020, knifejunkie.com slash knives 2020. The 40th edition uh, has the most elite crop of knives and makers that uh, the world of blades has to offer. The book showcases blades of every class, every style. And Bob, what I find impressive is there's more than 800 full color images in the book, along with descriptions of the makers who created them. So just a fantastic resource there. Jim, over the years, I can't tell you how many times I've uh, ducked out of work, um, <clears throat> not in my current job, <laughs> uh, right. but have gone to Barnes & Noble or Borders back when it existed and have gone straight to that book and just sort of stood there in the in the aisle. Mesmerized. Just, yeah, just <laughs> drooling on this book that I'm not buying. 40th edition of Knives 2020 book. Again, you can find it at the knifejunkie.com slash Knives 2020. And Bob, as we kind of wrap up, one of the other things we wanted to do on the show, we, we you know, for a while there with the, the, the main show we have, we would uh, interview folks about uh, uh, knife shows coming up and we'd promote knife shows. And, you know, again, as we talked about at the beginning, we it was kind of a struggle. You know, this great interview, we didn't want to cut it off, but we also wanted to cover some of these other things. 
Yeah. Here on this, you know, number two episode, if you will, or number two show of the Knife Junkie podcast, we want to try to talk about shows, uh, but also, you know, encourage our listeners to submit their shows for publicity on the Knife Junkie mm-hmm. uh, webpage. And uh, one of the upcoming shows that uh, we're unfortunately not going to be able to get to, but we're, you know, we're working on going to the Blade Show East, but the second annual Blade Show West is coming up in Portland, Oregon, November 1 through 3. That's going to be at the Oregon Convention Center. You can find the details and tickets there on uh, bladeshowwest.com. And uh, if you have a show you want to submit to the knifejunkie.com slash calendar, go to the knifejunkie.com slash submit. And if you want to find a, a list of uh, shows that we have in our database, go to the knifejunkie.com slash calendar. So uh, a lot of good knife shows always, uh, more than you and I could even hope to hope to attend. Yeah, I just want to attend one. <laughs> so uh, coming up, Plan, uh, plans are in the works. Yep, yep. There's shot show coming up, and then of course in in June, I've already let my employer know I will not be around the first weekend of June. All right, there you heard it, the knife junkie. We'll look forward to meeting you there. All right, Bob. Final thoughts. Uh, first episode here of the the second uh, podcast, if you will. Well, I'm glad. We I'm up. glad we're doing this because. Uh, when we uh, when we were trying to fit this stuff in before and after the interviews, I found myself censoring myself. So now I can just kind of talk ad nauseum. Oh, about great! It. <laughs> oh, I can't great. wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just happy that we have. Yeah. We're giving ourselves the opportunity to open it up a little bit and talk about some of the other things uh, that that are going on and and that some of the other things I'm thinking about. Well, and uh, again, the the interviews will be mostly on the shows that we release on Sunday nights. You may find them Sundays or Mondays in your in your podcast feed. But Bob, I do want to mention uh, or let you mention a couple of the upcoming guests that you have coming up on the uh, the interview shows. Because what I would like to ask our listeners is if they have any particular questions or if they uh, have something they want to know about a particular guest that you're going to be uh, interviewing and talking with, if they would uh, call the listener line, that's the knifejunkie.com slash listener line at 724-466-4487, or shoot Bob an email at bob at the knifejunkie.com. If there's a specific question you would like him to ask one of these upcoming guests, please let us know, and uh, we'll make sure your question is asked. Yeah, yeah, we're we're going to be talking to Spartan Blades coming up. We're going to be talking to uh, Ron Kazakowski of Traditional Filipino Weapons. Uh, we're going to be speaking with Michael O'Makaliri, and he's a he's a very interesting dude who uh, is a knife maker from Ohio who was featured on a sixty minutes episode uh, when DHL uh, closed down their Ohio plant mm-hmm. uh, in um, in two thousand eight, uh, their distribution center, I should say. And uh, he was working there, and 60 Minutes did a profile on him and mentioned his knife making. And ever since that uh, episode, his career has taken off. So we're going to talk to him. Uh, yeah, we got a bunch of great guests coming up. So, again, if you uh, have specific questions for any of those uh, guests, uh, please call the listener line, 724-464-487. Let us know your specific question. And please, if you're a knife maker, a knife purveyor, manufacturer, if you're involved in the knife industry, you want to mention your website or whatever, Please do that, man. When we ask your question, we'll make sure we give you credit uh, and publicity for your site, et cetera, as well. So we, we want to get everybody involved here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. Bob, final words as we're wrapping up. Keep them sharp. Short and sweet and to the <laughs> point. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I'm getting the tip. Thanks for listening, everybody, to show number two of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.